few months ago, Alexei left the truth. Oh, no. We haven't heard. We're so sorry, Natalia. What happened? A workmate began feeding his mind with doubts about the organization. Pretty soon, those doubts turned into belief. And he left. Everyone's been so supportive in the congregation. And Jehovah, he has never left me. Yeah. I remember your words about courage all those years ago. I just didn't want to tell you because I knew how much it would hurt you. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I ended up getting disfellowshipped. Sonia Erickson has been disfellowshipped. It crushed my whole family. My family missed me so much. Even after all I had done. What helped them to remain loyal to Jehovah for the many years I was disfellowshipped? It was the Bible account of Aaron. Jehovah directly judged two of Aaron's sons and put them to death. In this case, Jehovah asked Aaron and his family not to mourn in order to show the entire nation that they supported Jehovah's judgment. Mom and dad saw that they needed to be loyal, just like Aaron. They loved me and wanted me to come back to Jehovah. I tried to contact them, I just wanted to talk and to hear their voice. I missed being with my family. And they thought about reaching out to me. But they knew that if they had associated with me, even a little, just to check on me, that small dose of association might have satisfied me. It could have made me think that there was no need to return to Jehovah. So don't be bogged down on these apostates and be careful on the internet. Human apostates are mentally diseased and they try to infect others with their disloyal teaching. We both just studied and researched relentlessly night and day. It didn't stop. It was very obsessive. Um, and the more we learned, the more upsetting it became. And to the point where I was really, with all my might, hoping and praying and wishing that what I was learning was not true. And trying to feed myself the, it's just all a bunch of apostate lies. It's just a bunch of stories they manipulated and it's bogus. And I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and it's like I'm going to have this, you know, awakening and realize, oh, this is a load of crap and let's move on, continue with our lives. We need not look any further. Well, fortunately, I would wake up and that wasn't the case. It would slap me all in the face again and it wasn't going to go away. So the more we learned, the more we realized that we were living in a lie. We literally, by just doing some critical thinking and research, um, had torn apart in, in a matter of weeks. And not even intentionally trying to do so, actually intentionally trying to do the opposite of proving our beliefs to in fact be true. Once you choose to, loo to leave the religion, you'll be left with no one no one to talk to and this is really sad because a lot of the Jehovah's Witnesses they get caught up in the trap this way and this is kind of how they keep you I lost my mother my sister my grandmother my grandfather my aunts cousins everybody they basically um, said um, you know you are free you are free to leave any religion at any time and I said I must just stop you there uh, you're wrong. I am not free to leave this religion. 
if if it wasn't for the fact that I'm being shunned by my family and I told them about just before I came I had an email from my dad saying that he would be shunning me I said if it wasn't for the fact that I was being shunned you could say that it's, I'm free to leave this religion but the truth is the truth is that if I leave this religion I am punished there are ramifications visited on me through my family my family is used as a weapon against me through shunning I mean, I, I've read so many, I, I'd say literally hundreds of stories of people who have either been close to suicide. I personally know of six that did commit suicide as a result of growing up as, as a JW. Um, I hear the horror stories and it just breaks my heart. And to know that the organization victimizes these ones and says that they're the bad guy, you know, it just, it just blows me away. You know, the doubts that you have, it's normal to have doubts like that. Don't suppress them. You need to find out the truth for you. Can't what? shy away from uh, strictly observing what the scriptures tell us to do in these situations, and it's just, it's literally as simple as that. Can you show me the scripture that says that if someone voluntarily changes their beliefs, that their friends and family should avoid speaking to them altogether? Okay. Well, we're not going to. I'll be honest with you. We're not here to debate the scriptures. It's your, your parents, even if you weren't in fellowship tonight. Your parents would, I'm telling you right now, your parents are probably going to hold off association with you anyway for the protection of their own spirituality. You're about to make a decision about whether or not my parents are allowed to speak to me. Do you understand that? Our decision will be about your choices, what you have chosen to do. That's what our decision is based on. But you don't recognize that your decision is going to effectively be an order to all Jehovah's Witnesses, including my parents, about whether or not they're allowed to speak to me. We don't take this lightly. I should hope not. But the ball is in your court. And do you think it's reasonable to offer me those two alternatives, to either believe what I'm told to believe, or accept being cut off from friends and family. Does that seem like a reasonable choice to you? Does that seem to you like something that the scriptures explicitly require? We respect the faithful slave's direction on understanding God's word. We, we love Jehovah. We love Christ as the head of the congregation. And we recognize the faithful slave's governing body helping us to understand what Jehovah wants us to do. We wish that you would see it the way you did before but we reap what we sow. If this is what you want to sow, then just like us, we have to reap what we sow. So it's your decision. This isn't a, a personal thing that we're trying to, be, because we're mad or anything. Oh, no. I, right. I you're, you to you're under direction. Well. You're under direction. Right. You know, it's, it's under Jehovah's direction, really, you know, based on what the scriptures tell you, us. Right? You have your yeah. opinion on that. Yes. Right. Yes, you do. Okay. And that's it, because we want to protect the sheep also, right. I mean, type of thing. That's why we are not, that's why that's we have why we no friends. That's why we ourselves. We, we're, Group. And I we understand, but, plucked ourselves but you're out. not, we don't want you taking away Dan's parents and my mother. And that. But, but we're not taking them away, your actions are taking no. them away. No, that's not no, true. No, that's not true. No. But, you know, that, that's what it boils down to. Is no, it's not. So I guess. Spoken to your dad and your mom. Yeah, and but they, they have they because are, they they, they were are so distraught. Uh, they are so heartbroken. Heartbroken. Your parents are. You see, your parents have not disowned you. Your parents are hoping that that hopefully someday you would you you would come back to Jehovah. You see, you 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 have decided to go down a path that they don't like. Mm -hmm. And so they are hoping that by not condoning what you're doing, that you may Come somewhere down sense. that yeah. path. All of a sudden, just just like this has hit you, and, and really, Isaac, I'm looking at you today, and you say that this stuff that you have been reading hasn't done that much to you. This, you are an un unhappy person. I can see it written all over you. Yep. You are distraught. You. And if you are not careful, my brother, you're gonna you're gonna end up 
you know, your, your mind is going gonna, is, is gonna to explode. Oh, I already passed that point.